Hi, uh, today I will use the CR scan also here to scan this object, which is a featureless object, but I will scan it in the geometry mode by using a small object lens here. Uh, auto has two lenses, a small object and a large object. The small object lenses give a higher detail, but the, the drawback is that the author ties its brightness of the marker to the exposure of the object. If you have a dark uh, color object, uh, so for example, if you put a dark color object here and scan with the markers, you need to adjust the brightness of the scanner to be able to scan the black object here, but it will be too bright for the markers. So the markers will be burned out and it will be difficult for the scanner to track but if you use a large object mode here, as I showed you in my previous video scanning the car body, it will use a separate brightness adjustment for the marker and the object, so you can adjust them separately, so it can track uh, much better with the large depth camera here. The best way to scan with the small object lens here is to use the geometry mode, which will track feature or the object as you move your scanner along. Uh, the owl that they give you in the box is the feature-rich object. It has many things sticking out from the surface and the scanner can lock into it as you move uh, around the object. But here, it's just a flat surface. So when you scan this object, it's likely that it cannot lock into place and it will slide away as soon as you start scanning. Uh, let me show you. I will use a uh, small object uh, geometry mode, high quality. This uh, latest firmware and the software here, the um, automatic exposure works uh, very well, so I will use it. Okay, looks like we have it. Uh, start scan now. See, uh, I can't even start to move the scanner. It cannot lock onto the objects here. It can see the object, but it cannot lock onto, so it cannot initiate the scanning. So I will add some feature onto the side here. Just a small cube. Okay, looks like we have it. I start the scan now. Okay, uh, what we have here is that our feature is not uh, enough on the size here. We still cannot uh, scan this object without drifting. Uh, I will add some new feature here. I have made a similar cube, but I add uh, the columns here and uh, I can place it directly onto the object surface. And then after we scan it, uh, I can cut it easily. And the uh, diameter here is only 10 millimeters. Okay, so I have put some more feature uh, directly onto the object. See if this will help. Here we have it. I will scan the other sides. So flip it to the other. Actually, it has the same geometry, both sides here. have all the uh, data so I will start to process the bright cloud here I will cut the try the rectangular selection tools choose a 0 0.1 resolution which is very high I think it's too high just to 0 0.2 this would be a better choice okay we have a 0 0.2 resolution here and then I will clean up the other sides here Uh, the object that we scan has a groove here. As you can see, uh, it's uh, possible that the software can merge them uh, in a vertical uh, axis. 
I'll try this in here one two two and then uh, three see I uh, try to mesh it two million faces and I won't be filling the holes and closure okay here's the result after meshing it looks like it uh, match better okay the, the letters align at least 2,000, 25,000 I can read it and it's aligned and the groove here also align well and the problem is the, the edge here there's some uh, we probably can smooth it in blender okay so we have a uh, holes here I use the um, surface selection so I won't be selecting the other side I only select what I see here at the front it won't go through the back here and then I choose the rectangular selection tools and then I select the, uh, the holes here I want to cut it into a square I hit, uh, as you can see here, it's one go to the back. I select the front here, I hit the lead key one time, and we have a perfect cut square. And then I uh, do the same for the other side here. So I will uh, export this uh, mesh into uh, Blender, export as the OBJ. So here we are in Blender. I delete what I don't need here, and then I will import the uh, OBJ files, this one. Here you can see on the right here, have a scale command here. You can scale it directly in this command. 001 we make it smaller 1000 times so you don't have to do it in the dialog in the software wait for a minute and it should be here hit home one time with the correct scale i change the unit to uh, centimeters okay so we have a correct scale see 19 for the length and uh, 2.86 for the thickness which is a correct scale so i move this object to the center here for alignment geometry to origin okay so i will check the x-axis Okay, look uh, straight, check the y-axis, I rotate it, hit R. Okay, let's try X, try Z axis, let's move it a bit here. Okay, look straight to me now. I move it up uh, in the Z axis. Okay, so we have a hover bank with uh, a square rectangular cut. So I will uh, remesh uh, this object in this uh, with, uh, with the tool here. Generate a uh, remesh. And then click on smooth. And uh, I'll use 10. 8, 9, 10 would be, uh, 8 which would be minimum for the octree depth. So uh, Blender, fill in the hole here perfectly, as you can see. If you uh, add the clarity scan to fill the hole, it will look this nice. Uh, we have about 2 million faces. I will apply and then I will go to the scalping. I will use uh, scalp, scalp mode in Blender with a tablet here. I just place like this. So. I adjust the brush size here, I hit S one time, which is the smooth tools here, I just smooth it. Okay, I will make a stand for this uh, power bank here by cutting out the box. The box here I draw in CAD and then we make it uh, fit like this. So I make a uh, import the box here in OBJ and then I cut it out with the uh, scan the, the data that we have here. So I have uh, this object here for the stand. I uh, rotate it here and then I move it up here. You can see here, I move it up here and I put on a mesh wheel. I move them up here just a bit. Okay, so before I cut it, I may I need to make this uh, this power bank a little bit bigger. Now it's scale 0 0.001, so if I want to make it bigger, I need to apply the previous scale first. I click on object, apply all transform. Now the scale is 1. So if I want to make it bigger, so when I print it, it can, uh, I mean, it doesn't, I don't, I don't have to press it to fit. So I, I just uh, use the scale about uh, 2%, 1.02, 1.02, So the power bank is now 2% bigger. Now we have 2 million. So if I, I want to cut the 2 million uh, meshes here, it will take really long time even with this uh, PC that I have. So I will uh, estimate it to around 700,000. So make the make the mesh here less dense. We don't need that much of the detail. We just need a curve here. So I use the um, ratio of about uh, 0 0.3. You 
need to hold on a bit okay now we have 650,000 triangles I will hit apply this is the reason that you don't want to import uh, I mean small object with a million of meshes 0 0.1 0 0.05 resolution because you can't do anything with it at the end you need to decimate it that to the point where the hardware and hard software can handle it so now I will um, boolean and subtract this object okay now this object is subtract I hit apply and then when I move this object up uh, it should leave the uh, whoa sorry I shouldn't put this end here I should put this end here I already made it so just an example uh, check before you cut because uh, sometimes you can't undo it because the memory problem uh, after that you can uh, remesh this uh, object smooth and make it like uh, 10 so you have uh, 4 million too much let's say 9 we have 1, 1 million which is about right and you hit apply then uh, you can uh, scalp it clean it inside here and when you're done you go here fire export stl selection only and scale it back to 1000 and then export it stl okay i will end my demonstration for now and for the uh, feature printing files i put in the description in the video thanks for watching